I'd like to thank to the organizer uh, who invited me uh, as a speaker to this meeting because it's a great opportunity to share with you results of our clinical study uh, on treatment of chronic periodontitis uh, with a minimal invasive approach and uh, additional with antimicrobial photodynamic, photodynamic therapy. We designed our protocol uh, based on uh, data from the literature and with the help of Mr. and Mrs. Witzetum and of course with the support of Brad and so thank you. Let me start with well-known definition that periodontitis is a chronic infection of supporting structure of teeth and sorry and here I am showing you x-ray images and clinical view of advanced parentitis with deep periodontal pockets and severe bone loss. From the epidemiologic studies, it's known that the prevalence of mild to moderate form of periodontitis ranging from 13 to 57 percent and severe form from 10 to 15 percent. It's a huge number of patients should be treated. The severity of disease increases with age. It's confirmed by this graph where code 3 of CPIT index indicates moderate and code 4 indicates severe form of disease. Subgingival biofilm is obviously different in periodontal healthy and in periodontitis. Here you can see increased number of red and orange complex bacteria as well. The main periodontal pathogens are bacteria from red complex, such as Porphyromonas gingivalis, Tanerella forzitia, and Treponema denticola. And you can see on this graph that the prevalence of all three bacteria are very high compared to gingivitis or healthy state. So, it is also interesting that all three bacteria nearly almost found together in subgingival plaque. So the basic periodontal treatment is elimination of pathogens from subgingival area. Of course, also uh, subgingival. So the instrumentation of tooth surface is an important part of periodontal therapy. We can do that, uh, that with hand instruments or ultrasonic devices. Here I'm showing you three photographs made with an uh, electron microscope. First one, only after washing tooth, uh, with uh, washed using toothbrush. The second one, uh, after scaling and root planning with hand instruments. And the third one, after ultrasonic scaling. It's 
clearly seen that after ultrasonic scaling, you get smoother and cleaner surface of, uh, of root. So whatever we do, we can't remove all pathogens subgingivally. But the HIA et al. found that there, there are no uh, statistically significant difference between these two treatment modalities. Even more, ultrasonic scaling has some advantages over hand scaling. It's important message for daily practice. These advantages are less hand and wrist fatigue, less tissue trauma, decreased treatment time, more efficient removal of dental plaque and calculi, particularly in deep pocket and furcation area. And there is also effect of tip, tip spray and with ultrasonic scaling, we preserve the cementum. So, I mentioned before that whatever we do, we can't remove biofilm in total. Uh, the reason are that bacteria invade into the adjacent soft tissue, root cementum, and also dental tubules. And recolonization of periodontal pockets from other affected areas may occur. So, Slots, in his article published in Periodont Periodontology 2000, suggests that in addition to minimal invasive approach, with ultrasonic scaling, antiseptics are used. So we designed our protocol like that. We compare two minimal invasive approaches. Gold standard method with hand instruments, scaling and root planning. And another one, ultrasonic device. But on the question whether to use two or three applications of PDT, we answered in our preliminary study. With PDT, we wanted to influence the formation of biofilm in two or three critical points. We know that after one to two day, pioneers attached to the pellicula. So we call it pioneers because it's the first colonizer uh, who are able to attach to pellicula. After two to four days, mainly bacteria from orange complex join to biofilm, to this community. Very organized. And after seven days, late colonizer, mainly composed of red complex bacteria. So, in preliminary study, we use two episodes of photodynamic therapy in four patients after ultrasonic scaling. So, after first and seventh days after mechanical debridement. In second group, with three episodes of PDT, in four patients, we uh, applied first, third, and seventh days after mechanical debridement. We used diode laser, it's a member of low-level la laser, low laser. 
and um, photosensitizer. So, um, Dr. Hafner mentioned before that low level laser has two effects. So, uh, through the activation of photosensitizer, the first one is bactericidal effect. So, kill the bacteria through the activation of photosensitizer. And another effect is stimulation of periodontal tissue regeneration. So, with three applications of PDT, we greater reduced, after three months, bleeding on probing and also subgingival pathogens. So, in final protocol, we used three episodes of PDT after mechanical debridement. More clearly is shown here. We compare three treatment modalities. Scaling and root planning with hand instruments, ultrasonic scaling and ultrasonic scaling followed by three episodes of PDT in initial periodontal treatment. In support you, here you can see demographic characteristics of patients at baseline. Each group includes nine patients and distribution of gender and age. So, inclusion criteria were plaque index less than 20%. It's important that you teach your patients to proper oral hygiene. Then at least four teeth with increased problem pocket depth in each quadrant. And exclusion criteria were smoking, use of antibiotics at last six months, and pregnancy or breastfeeding and presence of systemic disease. In addition to measurement of clinical parameters, we did also microbiological analysis of subgingival biofilm at baseline one week, three and six months after treatment. But the question was, are we equally successful in the medium and in deep pocket? Because we know that with pocket depth, increase pathogens in it. You can see here. So we, collect, we collected half of the samples from medium and half of the samples in deep pockets. All three treatment modalities improve clinical parameters, mostly after three months after treatment. And with support in periodontal treatment, we uh, um, we can um, stay at the uh, stable level. Uh, problem pocket depth and clinical attachment level. The same we observed with bleeding on probing. But with PDT, we greater reduced bleeding or probing after initial treatment, it means after three months and after 12 months of, uh, after treatment. And with PDT, or in general, in general, uh, we reduced the positive sites of periodontal pathogens 
after one week. Then you can observe after three months uh, the increase almost at the baseline li level, and after six months, again decrease. But the greater reduction with PDT we observed for AA, aggregati bacillus uh, actinomyces and comitans, prevotella intermedia, and, and treponemal denticola. If we compare with uh, mechanical debridement only. Here I am showing you the effect of different treatment modalities on initial periodontal uh, uh, pocket depth. And statistically significant uh, decreasing or, or diminish of pocket depth we observed in, uh, in deep pocket. Here is uh, proportion or percentage of shallow, medium, and deep pockets. Uh, there is no statistically significant between treatment modalities. Uh, and uh, in general, you can observe that increase during the uh, treatment, increase of shallow pocket, percentage of shallow pocket, uh, decrease of medium and deep pockets with no statistical significance. And here you can see the microbiological analysis according to medium and deep pockets. And you can observe that after six months of treatment, we observed greater reduction of all five periodontal pathogens in PDT group compared to uh, scaling and root planning as a gold standard and comparing to ultrasonic scaling alone. So we may conclude that the additional application of photodynamic therapy to ultrasonic scaling failed to result in further improvement in terms of pocket depth reduction and clinical attachment level gain. However, photodynamic therapy resulted in a high reduction of bleeding on probing in three and in 12 months than following mechanical debridement alone. And PDT, as a junk to ultrasonic scaling, produced greater reduction in some of the key periodontal pathogens. It's also very important. And PDT was effective in both medium and deep pockets, and stronger reduced AA, TF, and TD in medium, and AA, PE, and TD in deep pockets comparing to ultrasonic scaling alone or uh, scaling root planning with hand instruments. And another conclusion is also that PDT demonstrated additional benefits and may therefore be recommended for the maintenance treatment of residual pockets. So thank you for your attention. This